known as a composite. It's like plywood. It has a hard part, which is the minerals that make up bone, and it has a soft part, which is the collagen. So bone is both protein and it's mineral. And when you put the two together, it gives it great strength, but it is alive. And the cells that are part of bone maintain it and they give it nutrients and they continue to, um, to just maintain the bone as living structure. Take away the mineral element of this chicken bone by sticking it in an acid bath and all you're left with is the bendy, flexible collagen protein part. So Mary wondered, could you find that organic material in a T-Rex fossil? We have always assumed that all of the organics go away. And so what you're left with is basically a mineral morph. And it's got lots of holes in it where the protein used to sit, where the blood vessels used to run, and the little houses where the bone cells are. That's all empty now. So, I mean, if we're right about that process, then if you remove the mineral, you should have nothing left, right? Because the organics are already gone. So she set up a deceptively simple experiment. She dropped the T-Rex fossil packed full of medullary bone in an acid bath and left it overnight. When her assistant came back to check in the morning, something remarkable had happened. Something that didn't seem possible process went faster than neither of us predicted and so when she went to stop it by taking the the piece of medullary bone and putting it in water she went to pick it up with her tweezers and it went like that and she called me immediately said something's really wrong and you know I mean I I had the same expectation as anyone else if you dissolve away your dinosaur bone you're gonna have nothing left but we did this was a soft pliable piece of a T-Rex. So we saw this, where basically this is the medullary bone with the mineral removed. And you can see, see the blood vessels in, inside the bone? They stretch with the matrix themselves. This was really hard to hang on to. <laughs> but there you go. See it stretch? This was a combination of my absolute worst nightmare and Christmas. Every day in the lab for about a month. I couldn't wait to get to work, but I was scared to death at what had happened overnight. Um, it was, you know, goosebump inducing. Just about everything that we saw. It was, I can't even explain it, and I know I'll never have that experience again, but it was magic, just magic. Finding the soft tissue opened the door to a new world of possibilities. She now set out to do something that no one had ever done before. To try and find proteins. The building blocks of life. She started with this T-Rex bone cell. If there was a chemical signature of ancient proteins, it should be hidden away inside. Mary took a classic tool of modern biology, one that helps to identify proteins in chicken bones, and she applied this same test to the T-Rex soft tissue. If there were no proteins in the cell, the slide on the right would remain black. Anything green would be a sign of life. The green glow made paleontological history. It was very exciting, yes, I was very happy. Very cool. When it was first published in 2005, this research wasn't universally accepted. Some scientists said her samples might be contaminated. Others were dismissive. Because I was a middle-aged housewife from Bozeman, Montana, I had no credentials at all. And I think that, um, I think that came into play. I know it came into play later. Um, yeah, I, I had a reviewer on one of my papers once say that he um, didn't care what the data said, he knew it wasn't possible. And for me, it's like, if you can't be convinced by data, then how is this science? But over the past decade, her work at the North Carolina State University is gaining acceptance. She's ruled out the possibility of contamination 
and painstakingly analyzed other dinosaur bones. And she's gone even further, potentially turning Hollywood fantasy into scientific reality. She's taken some of the cells from the 68 million year old soft T-Rex tissue and began to look for the impossible. DNA. You know, if, if you have cells, if you have soft tissue, if you have proteins, why rule out DNA? So she took a single T-Rex bone cell and ran a series of chemical tests using a classic DNA staining procedure. If the DNA was present in the cell, it would show up in yellow. And astonishingly, it did. You can see there's this little light point right here that's internal to the cell membrane. It's inside the cell. It's very specific, a single point. We have a visual signal of something that chemically reacts like DNA. It looks like it, it acts like it, it smells like it, you know, yeah. I didn't tell you where those cells came from, but I told you the chemistry of what we did. So yeah, yeah, so it should be there. It's a bone cell for Pete's sakes. Now, if I tell you it's a dinosaur bone cell, all bets are off because everyone knows that DNA can't persist for 65 million years.